Hey guys, I'm Red. On the last episode, we talked about setting up and balancing the Steadicam, but on this episode, we're going to talk more about moving with it. So let's pick up the rig. Remember, bend over without bending your knees. Walk close to the rig. Let the arm do all the work and pick it right up. Now we want to talk about missionary position. It's your most basic everyday position you're going to be doing it all the time. And also in steady cam. So you want to be standing with your back straight and your hips pointed slightly towards the camera. And if your socket block is set correctly, it should be sitting comfortably and floating in that location. Now if you notice, you can control where the camera is with your hips a little bit, but you want the camera to be floating right to your side comfortably. And you shouldn't be doing this no hand thing very often. It is more of a party trick and bad things can happen. <laughs> I also want to talk about your rest position. So the best way to rest is to put the gimbal on your shoulder and it takes a lot of the weight off of you and puts it directly through your body. So it's much easier to stand like this for a while, but it is not as good as putting it on your docking bracket, which you should be doing all the time. You don't want to be carrying around the rig for no reason, like I'm doing right now. Now, let's talk about a very important aspect of the Steadicam, your hand grip. And for me, since I'm a standard operator, my left hand is on the gimbal and my right hand is on the gimbal handle. If you're a goofy operator or a left-handed operator, it would be the opposite, but everything still applies. So let's take a closer look. You want to place your fingers as close to the center of gravity as possible. Since that is inside the gimbal, your thumb and pointer finger should be just under the post. For the most control, you want to spread out your fingers. Don't fall into the trap of letting your hand drop down or letting your fancy tea time pinky finger come off the post. This finger becomes very important once the rig starts moving and along with the thumb should be in constant engagement to keep the rig level. People also have the bad habit of using the tips of their fingers to hold on. And this works when you're using extremely lightweight steady cams. I use this portion of my fingers to give me the best grip because as weight increases and camera inertia increases, you will need more surface area to properly control the rig. This is your standard grip and is kind of like your home base. You would change from there depending on what the shot calls for. Take a look at how my hand position changes for a tilt. My pinky goes to the rear of the pulse to hold up at that angle. And for a tilt down, my hand shifts to the front so my pinky can hold the front of the post. For pans, I use a few techniques. I might walk my fingers around the post, and I also might start the pan and then loosen my grip to allow it to slide in between my fingers, but there's no need to completely let go of the post. But since you are wearing the rig, most of your pans will be done by turning your body in what's called a body pan. And that brings us to walking around. There's two important things to remember about walking. You always wanna walk in a forward or backwards direction. So even if you're crabbing, you still want to walk forward and back. Another thing to remember is that the arm takes away your body movement and separates it from the camera. So there's no longer a need to walk like a ninja like you do when you're shooting handheld. Stand up straight and walk normal. But it will still come in handy in case your cat decides to finally seek revenge and you have to sneak out of your house in the night. As you're walking, you've probably noticed the pendulum effect that occurs. Because the bottom of the rig is heavier than the top of the rig, it wants to tilt down as you walk and tilt up as you stop walking. This can be counteracted with some preventers. In a similar way to the way you tilt up and down, you need to place your pinky finger in the way of the post. It is not pushing against the post like a tilt. It is placing your finger in the way so that it cannot pendulum past the level point. You need to be preventing the rig from doing what you don't want it to before it does it. Correcting after the fact is too late. This is also the case when chucking the camera, but you would use your pinky and thumb. This is a great technique, but not the one I actually use. I instead lightly pinch the post with my hand as I walk, but I could not figure out a way to show this. But you can see my fingers pulsing, showing slight adjustments to the rig as I walk to keep it level. So your left hand is for framing and for preventers, but what is your right hand doing? Well, your right hand is booming up and down. You don't want to be making any adjustments to that with your left hand. And it's also for softening your stops and starts. Pull the rig towards you before you start walking. Also, let the rig continue into your body after you stop. This allows you to feather the movement without it being an abrupt start and stop. 
but make sure you're not putting yourself into a position where you can't make the next move for the shot. Now there's also a trick for walking. I already said you don't need to walk like a ninja anymore. Was that a lie just to get my cute cat on camera? Well, kind of. You should be walking with your back straight. But also there's a trick to starts and stops. You don't want to land with both feet on the floor. All weight should be on one foot, so you can take the next step without moving your hips. Remember, you can control the socket block with your hips, so moving them moves the camera. There's no reason to stand like a flamingo though. I use my other foot for balance. Now that you know those techniques, try combining a few of them into some practice routines. There's a link above to a video that I made of some that I like to do. Now let's talk about a different position, Don Juan. Now Don Juan is when you point the camera in the opposite direction that your body is facing. Say if you're doing a shot where you're about to run or you're going upstairs, never go upstairs backwards. Since Don Juan is more difficult to do, you probably don't want to do the whole shot that way. So you're going to need to learn how to switch in and out of it. So let's talk about that. The idea is to make the switch completely invisible. The camera shouldn't change speed, pan, or randomly crab. This means you moving around the camera and not the camera moving around you, and doing it in one smooth movement. As I decide to make the switch, I pre-pan just a small amount in the opposite direction that I'm moving in. This is different based on the quality of gimbal you have, but the friction caused by you moving around the post will cause it to slightly pan with you, so I counteract this as I start my body around the post. There's no need to let go of the post here, just loosen your grip and allow your fingers to slide around. Step around the rig in as few steps as possible, and as you do, move the rig slightly away from you to allow space for the batteries to clear your body. Then, get back into your correct missionary position, but with the camera facing the other way. Don Juan. If the action is slower, I like to make the switch slower and will walk my fingers around the post to keep the most control the whole time. One of the keys to making a gray switch is finding the best place in the shot to hide it. And that might involve doing a little bit more Don Juan than you want, but it's worth it. In this example, I hide the switch as I wrap around the actor so that I can safely go up the stairs forward, a common use for going into Don Juan. But without enough time to switch back to missionary, I continue the shot in Don Juan even though it is more difficult to frame. I then hide the switch as I come out of the doorway to do the rest of the shot missionary. In this example, I'm not only doing the shot in Don Juan because the actor is running, but it also allows me to get the camera as close to the hedge as possible. I hide the switch as she moves camera left, then hiding another switch in the pan to get the camera as close to the dumpster as possible. Now that you've learned these tips, try them out at home and check out my Instagram, at Steady Red. Hey Red. What voice over me? The talent is a professional basketball player. Can we get the camera to his eye level? Uh, yeah, sure, no problem. So that brings up the importance of finding out what the shot is before you set up the rig, but Let's talk about getting the camera up as high as possible. Most people would want to raise the lift knobs as much as possible, so they wouldn't have to hold the rig up anymore. But that changes the range of motion of the arm and won't let it do its job fully. So instead, let's change out the arm post. Although not an option on every arm, most arms have an adjustable arm post. On the G-Series arms, there's an adjustment that allows you to control how easily the gimbal handle will turn on the post. I like it to be very loose, but some people prefer it to have a lot of friction. There are a few different ways companies have found to adjust the arm post, but on the G-Series, there's a lever that allows you to move the post up and down, or to pull it out. For most shots, I use a 6-inch post, but if I need more height, I use a little magic. One, two, three, boom, and I have a 12-inch post. Or you could just keep a longer post in your kit or whatever. Changing out the arm post is a quick and easy solution for getting the camera higher without sacrificing the boom range. I can now lift quite high and we'll definitely be able to get the shot. So thanks for watching. Oh, Red. Uh, yeah? Talent just got here and he's refusing to take off his heels. Uh, okay. Do you think you can get another three inches higher? Just a second. So if you just need those extra couple inches, you can always raise your socket block up. All right, I'm ready to go. Oh, Talon's changed his mind. He now wants to do the whole walk and talk on stilts. Okay. So we're gonna need you to put the rig in the highest, most unwieldy position possible. All right. Well, this is gonna be a little bit more work. So let's talk about that setup. 
Since we have already used all the simple options of raising the camera, the next option is to raise the camera by lowering the gimbal. One way to do this is to lower the camera weight, but you should have already done that and it's not usually an option. The next option is to move the bottom weight so that the balance point moves down as well. Lengthen the bottom post as far as possible, safely possible. To show the change, I marked the difference after balancing and it gave me an extra 2.7 inches. Very scientific. For even more height, I moved the monitor down as well to increase bottom heaviness as long as it doesn't compromise seeing the shot. Putting the monitor in line with the batteries also makes the rig more coplanar, making it easier to dynamic balance later. Perfect for those giraffe to giraffe whip pans. This adds an additional two inches of height or about five centimeters for those people who have not landed on the moon. I would also add on a third battery to increase the weight further and to help power the rig. This is not an option on every rig, but is nice to have for power hungry cameras as well. Some rigs have it built in, but mine is an add-on made by Tiffin. Giving another two inches to the rig, which is almost as far down as my gimbal handle can go. Once everything is set up, rebalance is normal. Set the drop time, static balance, dynamic balance, go to crafty, set the arm for its additional weight. So now that the rig's set, we can put it on. And once the arm is set, I'm ready to go. So if the range is about head height to touching the ceiling, I can actually go a little bit above the ceiling here, about two inches higher than my ceiling. And it's gonna be a pretty cool shot. I'm excited to do it. So thanks for watching this episode. Hey, and um, you, Red? Uh, yeah? Yeah, there's been another change. Uh, if they want to go any higher, we're going to have to get a grip to build us a ramp or something? The basketball player has been replaced with one of the producer's daughters. Uh, of course. Do you think I can read the script again? This doesn't make a lot of sense. So we need to get the camera to the eye line of a six-year-old girl for the walk and talk? Uh, okay, give me like two minutes. So now's a good time to talk about low mode. Low mode is when you invert the rig so that the camera is in the bottom position and the monitor and the batteries are on top. Let me undo everything I just did and I'll talk about it further. Well, that was a lot easier than it usually is. Now the fastest way to get into low mode, let's say they're changing the shot to be low mode, but it's a quick, easy shot, is to change it while you're wearing the rig. So you could have done the shot standard mode like this, and then you can turn the rig horizontal to the floor, change the drop time so that it's the opposite, so the two seconds is the camera going down. It's a little fast, but whatever. And now you can do the shot in low mode, as long as you angle your monitor so you can see. And normally when you were in low mode, you would dock with a docking ring that would be here on your dock. But because I have a vault, it causes me to have to flip the rig every time and dock it that way, which is a nuisance, but it's worth it for the ball. Now let's put the rig in low mode correctly, and to do that, we need to take a look at my kit. Who left that in there? Well, anyway, these are some of my low mode parts. These two parts are essentially the same thing. One made by Tiffin and one made by Clean Camera Support. They're F-brackets and they allow you to flip over the gimbal handle to allow you to get the camera lower and to put the handle back into proper relationship with the rig. I do prefer the clean one because it gets lower and to me, I trust it a little more. It also gives you more to hold on to, but this one is a prototype and is not currently able to be used. They are fixing it. I also use this handle in conjunction with the long arm post and a pin to get the camera really low but it is awkward and probably not the best way to do it. I also use a low mode monitor and bracket to attach it to my top stage. This isn't mandatory, but it is a nice accessory to have. I like that it allows me to still look down as I walk so I can still see where I'm about to step, but I also have the other monitor so I can look at that too if I want. So let's start by getting this rig ready. The first thing I would do is add the low mode monitor to the rig. I would most likely do this at the very beginning of the day if we had some low mode shots that day and just leave it there. First, I have to lengthen the 15 millimeter rods on top of my sled, 
Why am I using such odd rods? Well, that's what I have and they work fine. Then slide on the bracket and tighten everything up. Then screw on the monitor. After it's in the spot that you like, power and cable everything up. You will also want to drop down your monitor to make it easier to see. If you don't, you will have the monitor bracket and the center post obstructing your view. I like to take advantage of the yoke on this, but it's not an option on every rig. If it's not an option for you, then you can flip over your monitor bracket completely. Since you're shooting with the camera and monitor upside down, the image looks fine. But if they flip the camera image internally, you'll have to do the same for your monitor. So to make it simpler, flip your monitor so when you flip the camera and the image flips on your flipped monitor, it will look correct. Or even simpler, flip the image if it's upside down. Attach your F bracket to the gimbal handle using a strong pin or screw. This is not the time to buy the cheap hardware. And once the rig is ready, you're ready to put it on the balancing pin and balance as normal. Balance as normal. Picking your drop time, then setting your static balance, then your dynamic balance. And once all those things are set, you're ready to put it on your arm. Now a couple of things to remember about low mode. You're gonna to want to bend your back to get lower, but you need to make sure that you're still standing straight. Uh, you wanna keep the same position as you normally would. Another thing to remember is that your right hand now goes on your F bracket. It'll keep your hand a little bit higher and it'll be easier to adjust. And the next thing to remember is that your left hand is gonna go below the gimbal still. It does feel a little unintuitive and uh, it's much skinnier than you're used to up here but it'll be a lot easier than doing it above the gimbal. Of course, if you're getting crazy low, your arm just won't reach. And remember, you don't want to bend your back. So you're going to have to use above the gimbal, but it is much harder to frame above the gimbal. And also, if you don't have a bolt, you would normally be docking upside down on the post. So guys, I'm ready. So thank you guys for watching. If you want to check me out on Instagram, it's at Steady Red. Oh, hey, Red. Yeah? We're having a hard time making up another excuse to get the camera really low. Let's say it's a snail's POV, maybe. Uh, of course, right. We just think it's really unsatisfying if you don't put it as low as possible. Can we do that? Yep, let's do that. Okay, so let me reset this again. So to get the camera lower, we use the same tricks as getting the camera higher. Lengthen the post and add some weight if you can. Then balance as normal. So now that it's balanced and the arm is set, let's try it out. Of course, now I have to hold above the gimbal, but I can get the lens pretty much to the floor and to about waist height. There are a couple other tricks you could do to get the camera lens even farther down. Sometimes flipping the camera so that it's not upside down will get the lens closer to the floor. In this case, I don't think it would really matter. Uh, some cameras you don't have a choice though, you have to flip them to the correct orientation. You could also take the F bracket and flip it upside down and make it into a J bracket, but I don't have a screw to go through the post. So I don't have that capability right now. So thanks for watching. Well, if you like this video, please check out my Instagram at Steady Red. And if you like this one, you'll probably like the part one of it. You probably should have watched that one first. And the other one is about practice routines you can do to practice this stuff. 
Thanks for watching.